Well, the band Everything Everything were playing a small gig for fans at HMV in Manchester last night. The four-piece group released their second album, Arc, today, and earlier I caught up with them about how digital markets have changed the music scene. Jeremy, amazingly, you were in HMV as it went bust in Manchester yesterday. Yeah, not, not that we knew it at the time, but that's true. We were, we were doing an install performance and a signing. We're just <laughs> giving us box sets that we asked for <laughs> left, right and centre, which is what, very... What, what does it mean to you not having HMV to get your music out? I think it's another body blow to the physical product. It's not recorded music generally, but it's the, the actual record you can hold in your hands has it's lost another platform. And, and the album cover and the rest. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and all the things that go with it, like the artwork, the, and the artwork. things that we spend time on. But there's artwork online. And but, there's yeah, the music. but I, you can't engage with it in the same way, I don't think. You can't hold it in your hands. It is a tactile object, a record. You put it you, on your iPad. I mean, a, a tiny little iTunes picture this big on your screen isn't going to compare to a CD or an, especially an LP, you know. And also, people spend all day on computers looking at screens. So, do you, you want to take pleasure in just looking at another screen? You know, it's nice to have something in your hand and search for lyrics and things. You have more, more music around than there's ever been. Mm. More venues, more opportunities, more radio, more internet. And yet, a shop that sells music has gone bust. It's, it's because of that, though. It's because of that ease of access. That means you don't have to walk down to the high street and actually spend money on it. But the plus plus is that you really exist three dimensionally, yeah. live, yeah. on stage, and people can get to you. So there are more performances than any mm. bands we ever used but to. See. The, the live situation is flourishing, and that's brilliant. You, know, you won't be able to get CDs on the high street as easily now HB is gone. I mean, there's still going to be. The, the main, the big hitters at Tesco's yeah. or whatever. Yeah, but you'll sell CDs at your gigs. Yeah, but you can sell them at gigs, but what I'm saying is that there'll be more people now buying stuff online. I did work experience at HMV um, when I was younger and just uh, uh, go, not really knowing what I wanted, maybe the artist, and then you just go, oh, I like the look of that one. Mm. Or you don't really know when it's come out and what order they are. And obviously, if you're on the internet, you know all about that stuff. But there's something quite nice that, uh, about mm not knowing absolutely everything and, and, and seeing loads of reviews. And it's, it's, you know, you can just pick them and go, I have no idea if this is going to be any good, but I'll take it home and give it a I go. It's moving on to the internet and we just have to accept it, I think, eventually. And mm. it's just, we're, we're generally just telling the sort of grandparents reminiscing of the good old days of flicking through records in a shop, you know. It's just going to become a thing that happened when we were young. But it does uh, mean there's much more real band, real music. Mm. It does, but, I mean, HMV disappearing is not, is not related to that. We could still have a flourishing live scene and bands forced to play as bands in, in all the ways that's great, and we could still have a record shop. The fact that it's gone is not going to boost going to it. Or, could or, could or, any of you run a record it. shop? Could you see a device in which you make it work? I think the whole idea of, of having a shop of any kind that, that could be online is becoming clearly not viable. I mean, it's, it's just a matter of time, really. I mean, if you could buy it online, mm. then you're just going to, and you're just going to sit there and do it while you're in bed. You're not going to go to the high street, unless it's something that you have to go and get physically. And music's just not a physical thing. It so, never was. It's, it's, it's sound. One of its problems the last few years is that it's spread itself very thinly as a kind of panicked response to the fact that people were buying less physical music. And so it started promoting games and DVDs and all of that much more and didn't really know what it was. Whereas what was good about it for a while is that it had its place in the market. Let's be candid, I don't see any of you actually crying about um, HMV. If anyone out there in the general public thinks it's a big shock, I don't think it really has been in the music industry. I think they're very well prepared and they know what's going to come next. They just don't know what's going to come after that. Well, everything, everything, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Thank you. Thank you. And on to tomorrow's programme... It was the magazine which gave punk music its name, but as a new book celebrates its influential role in 1970s New York, we look at the legacy of its unique spirit on the British music scene. I accidentally saw the Sex Pistols at a nightclub in Birmingham and it changed my life forever because I was suddenly in a room full of men and women who were all misbehaving. And tomorrow night, we'll change your life too. Back at seven. Until then, from Krishnan and from me, that's Channel 4 News. Good evening.